This is Modern Homesteading. You didn't think for a minute that I wouldn't be building a crosscut saw vise, did you? That's better. Now I can sleep with a clear conscience. Nice. So I'm halfway through putting all the hardwood strips on. Uh, if you don't know what these are, just stand by here. I'll make it, it'll all be clear here soon enough. Using uh, hardwood, hickory, little strips there. These are 3 8 by inch and a half. And I put a 45 on them to ease uh, getting the saw in there. I'm putting twice as many as we had on the uh, the vices at the class. I thought that they were a bit flim flimsy and could need uh, need it, it definitely needed improving uh, is what which is what I'm doing. So I'm making them a little bit more ro robust and twice uh, twice as many using these beautiful bronze screws, uh, taper screws, uh, so those will hold nice and secure. So I'll show you the process of shimming these up and installing them. Whenever possible, use a template. Uh, it just saves so much time. I've marked my, I've got two different uh, bolt patterns or hole patterns here. I marked t templates with a T on them. And that way I can do one and I can lay out how I want my screw holes to be. And then I can use that and just transfer using a, a little awl here uh, to each one without going through the rigmarole of uh, laying everything out, each, uh, each piece individually. Because I use a template, I only have to change my tools one time. I'm not just going back and forth repeating the process. I can come out here, chalk up my drill bit, and drill everything at one time. If you look closely here in the hardwood strips, you'll see that they're spaced up. And the reason why is the saw needs to be able to slide underneath here. It needs to be able to slide in, and they, uh, so they have to be spaced out. This here is a Simmons saw gauge. It measures different thicknesses of material. Sheet metal is uh, considered or is measured in gauges, you can see right there, different thicknesses. So what I have determined is for the center, because uh, good saws have tapers, the saws that I'll be using, using, I'll start with a 14 gauge in the center, as far as the spacers go, and out here to the outside will go with a 13 to 12 gauge. Back in Granddad's bolt box. So since I'm in the center, I want to go with the 14 gauge, so I'm just checking washers here, and I'm just matching up two washers that share the same thickness. So we got two 14 gauge washers there, and those will do just fine. Be sure and pre-drill everything. On these hardwood strips, make sure that the hole is a little bit bigger than the screw. You do not want to have to thread a screw through this. The screw will pull tight. Uh, we'll have a smaller hole here on the, bait, the vise itself, but make sure you have plenty of room. Countersink those so they're nice and clean, and uh, do, don't skimp on the wood. You want to use hickory, oak, something really hard and durable, because when we're setting the teeth, uh, we're putting a lot of force on this vise. Now we'll put our two 14 gauge washers right here, and then our hardwood strip.
I like flathead screws. They're kind of old fashioned. I think they're elegant. They look better than Phillips screws. Lots of you uh, have commented that you don't like them. And I'm not saying this for everybody, but for a lot of people, the reason why you have so much trouble with them because you're not using the right screwdriver. You don't, don't do this. Don't, don't have a screwdriver that's too small for, for the head. You know, get the screwdriver that fits. You know, get one that fits the head. And then you're not going to have those problems if you have a good quality screwdriver. And you don't use a half inch wrench on a 9 16 bolt. You shouldn't use the wrong, it's too small of a screwdriver on a screw and, and um, strip off the head. Now that is properly done. I like it. Much better than what I had to work with at the uh, nine mile station, that rickety old uh, vice. This, is, uh, this has got some, uh, su some substance to it. Love the, uh, I love the hardwood strips, doubling those up, getting more of those. I can adjust them with the screws. Right now they're just about perfect. They're tight enough where I, this will hold. I, and I haven't even tightened these up. I've got a lot more I can do if I want, wanted to. But right here, just the way it is, I wouldn't have to do anything apart from swaging it. We'll, talk, we'll cover that later, but as far as filing it and doing the rakers and checking everything, this is going to be just right. I, I couldn't be happier. Turned out, turned out super. Got a great big nice 5 8 all thread on there, kept so it won't pull out. Hickory hardwood strips shimmed out to accommodate the saw. They're closer here, further there. We'll talk about tapered saws uh, in another video, but uh, very nice. That's going to be really, uh, it's going to be a real joy to work on. Has a nice organic feel. Didn't cost me much, didn't cost anything. A few dollars, you know, a few dollars for strips, but. Let's put our maker's mark on it, a little boiled linseed oil. Well, that linseed oil didn't hurt a bit. That really brought it out. Super nice. Got uh, my little five foot felling saw on there, Megan. Just a gem of a little saw. A saw's got four gauges of different uh, of uh, taper in it. Just, just a, a, a couldn't can't believe it. I, I almost discounted it because it was so rusty. But with a lot of work, I brought it back, and it's one of my. It's one of going to be one of my best and most cherished saws. And that's it. This is not the end of the bench. This is just the main, the most difficult component of it. The rest of it is the stand, and that will be uh, in the next part. But uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and start looking for a saw. What type of person would sit through a three-part series on a cross-cut saw vise? I know what type of person. The type of person would like to see more about cross-cut saws. Click on that video, top right, uh, give you a little bit of uh, more information. Uh, how to clean them up, what to look for, a few different things, and more to come. Ah, did you click the thumbs up? Quick reminder, tick tock, tick tock, time is ticking away, now is the time to click the thumbs up. So, uh, that's the lion's share of the uh, crosscut saw vise. Uh, we'll do a stand uh, in continuing or, or, or up and coming videos, but uh, turned out great turned out great. I'm really, uh, really happy with it. Can't wait to start working on it. I am looking for some tools, so uh, I might enlist you guys to help me. There's a couple things in particular that I'm looking at, and I'll upload a video in the next few days um, about what I'm looking for and send you guys uh, out into the world, hopefully, to help me find uh, some things that I need. And if you don't have an old crosscut saw, um, now's the time to get them. They don't make them anymore, and they are um, getting harder and harder to find. So, Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.